my name is Caroline Sanchez. I'm a marine biologist at SPC since 2004. I've been studying marine biology at the University of James Cook in Australia and I've been identifying preys for our Pacific Marine Specimen Bank, but also developing trainings for observers to collect samples at sea and in port. I've been collecting samples, more than thousands of samples so far since 2004 for our Pacific Marine Specimen Bank, and I'm here today to share with you my knowledge and my experience. Today, we're going to learn how to prepare gonads for histological analysis. We are going to need 10% formalin solution, 70% ethanol for long-term storage, cassettes, vials of different sizes, a knife, a pencil and a permanent pen, labels, it can be cable tie labels or other type of labels, gloves, a weighing scale, and an extractor or a fume hood. Today for this video, we have three types of gonads. Large female gonads, small male gonads, and large male gonads. If you manage to collect the entire gonads, weigh both gonads. You can still weigh the gonads, even if they are broken. Just place all the pieces on the scale. Note the weight of the gonads. There's no need to weigh the gonads if you cannot collect both and entire gonads. If the gonads present a section of fat or filaments, remove them before weighing the gonads. If you have both gonads, always sample the largest gonad and add the largest area of the gonad. Then, depending on the size of the gonads, there are two protocols. If the gonads are larger than the cassette, select the largest gonads cut a wide slice and put it in a container. If the gonads are small, cut a 5 mm slice and put it in a cassette. In both cases, please keep the remaining gonads with the label in a zip bag and put it in the freezer. For the sampling of large gonads, as you can see, this female gonad is larger than the cassette. Instead of using the cassette, I will place a section of the gonad in a 250 mm container. Cut a wide slice, around 5 cm wide. The eggs need to hold together. Put the slice in the container already filled with formalin. Be careful while placing the slice inside the vial. If there is too much formalin, it could overflow from the vial. You can always add more formalin later on, under the extractor or fume hood, to completely cover the slice. Using a permanent marker, do not use a pencil, write on the container cap the sample number, the sampling date in the format of year, month and day, and the fishing vessel name. For the sampling of small gonads, with a drawing pencil this time, write the sample number on the cassette. Remove the top of the cassette by twisting it lightly. Cut a 5 mm wide slice. 5 mm is the height of the cassette. Lay the slice flat in the cassette, with the lumen of the gonad facing upwards. In this example with a male gonad, the lumen is a cavity where you can see the sperm in the center of the gonad. Close the cassette firmly, making sure the lid is completely locked to the bottom part of the cassette, and put it in the vial containing 10% formalin solution. For the sampling of large male gonads, even if the gonad doesn't fit inside the cassette, in contrast to female gonads, I can place a section of the male gonad inside the cassette. You cannot do this technique with large female gonads as the eggs will not hold together and the lumen will be too large. I first identify where the lumen is and to fit the cassette, I remove the external part of the gonad further away from the lumen. I place the section laying it flat inside the cassette. 
If needed, I use my knife to flatten the section to fit inside the cassette. You can see in this example, the top of the cassette squeezes the slice. This is not good. I need to cut another thinner section that will fit inside the cassette. The width of the slice must be smaller than the width of the cassette. For safety purposes, and if you have this option, work under an extractor or a fume hood, especially when you work with a large amount of formalin or when you are transferring samples. Always use gloves to protect your skin. On site, like in a cannery, choose to work in an aerated area and make sure not to spill any formalin on your working area or on your skin. If you do so, rinse thoroughly and for 10 to 15 minutes. Place your cassettes in 10% formalin inside a vial. You can put several cassettes in the same container. Do not mix samples coming from different boats in the same container. Don't forget to make a note to warn that the vial contains 10% formalin. Using a permanent marker. Do not use a pencil. Write on the container cap the sampling date in the format of year, month, day and the fishing vessel name. Inside the vial, Make sure the formalin properly covers all the cassettes, around 1 to 2 cm above the cassettes. Store the containers in a cool place, hidden from the sunlight. Be aware that formalin and ethanol are inflammable substances, so should be stored in a secure place. After two weeks, remove formalin from the vial. You can use an empty container at the rubbish for used formalin that can then be stored and recycled. Identify a chemical company that will collect your used formalin. Do not discard the formalin down the sink or in the sea. It is an environmental hazard. After two weeks, replace the formalin with some 70% ethanol instead. On the cap, use 70% ethanol to remove the written 10% formalin. And instead, write 70% ethanol. That's it for today. You can check the other videos for the Pacific Marine Specimen Bank Sampling Project. Thank you.